For everyone that says, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, know this. Cheating hurts a lot of people, usually after the fact or during. And today, we're going to venture across the pond to find out how many people got properly injured when it comes to the Premier League and the biggest scandal. Oh, and some are quite tasty. The EPL's most genius moments are coming up right after this. This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Look, during these weird times, you gotta keep your boys in shape and properly groomed. But on top of that, you gotta package them correctly. That's why Manscaped created the Perfect Package 3.0, which includes the new Lawnmower 3.0, water-resistant body trimmer made with advanced skin-safe technology. This kit has everything, crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver ball toning spray, and my favorite, the custom Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs. Look, if you're gonna venture out into the world, you want to present to whoever that lucky person is properly. And these bad boys keep things cool with crop cooling technology and is made from super soft contour flex technology that promotes breathability and repels that nasty moisture. All of this works in tandem with the products I just mentioned for an optimal comfort experience. Purchase them all together at manscaped.com and opt for the peak hygiene plan and get new boxers delivered to your door every replenishment cycle. Like I said, go to manscaped.com, five dash points, and get the perfect package 3.0 for 20% off, free shipping, and two free gifts. Manscaped.com, your balls. Well, thank you. Before we get started, the criteria is for both on and off the field incidents, scandals, intentional harm, and just outright cheating and tampering. And yes, I am American, so if you're triggered by schedule being pronounced that way, no apologies. Number 15, easier paid than done. Way back in 1905, Man City was vying for the league title. Their star winger, Billy Meredith, took it upon himself to offer upcoming opponent Aston Villa players 10 quid each to throw the match. Meredith's funds were rejected. He was banned a year, but then tried to pull an Astros and blame his manager, Tom Maley, for ordering him to do so. Man City finished third that season behind Newcastle and Everton. Something tells me we might see them again on this list. Number 14, the notorious D-I-V-E. Look, lots of people dive in football. The trick is to sell it or make it look provoked. Then there's Gareth Bale, the former Tottenham winger who openly admitted he practiced the um art form. You seem to dive a lot. Do you always plan to do that before every match? Um, yeah, I've been practicing for, for ages now and uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's um... Even more funny than his admission of honing his diving is his laughable explanation for trying to get out of the way of tackles, which he was quoted as saying in 2012. He currently plays for Real Madrid and surely still wears flippers and scuba gear out on the pitch. You don't mind cheating the opposition then? No, not really. I'm, I'm... Number 13, hands off the merchandise. Look, many of us have wanted to shake a ref like a bucket of mixed paint, but most athletes have the restraint and the understanding of consequence not to do such things. But not for Sheffield forward Paolo Di Canio, who in 1998 was involved in a fracas, got given the boot, then decided it was time to shove the ref down like he was a protester. Di Canio was given a lengthy 11 game ban. Really? Clearly the ref overreacted. Number 12, the dog ate my homework. We've all given lame excuses for why we didn't do something, but Rio Ferdinand's excuse for missing a drug test and receiving a eight month ban might be one of the worst I've ever heard. Back in 2003, the up-and-coming star for Man U claimed he forgot to piss in a cup because he was moving into a new house and went out shopping. I mean, I've found the remote control in the freezer before, but I've never forgotten to do something that could cost me eight months worth of checks. He would go on to play 12 seasons for Man U, not missing any more tests. Number 11, the Crooked Keeper. Back before the turn of the century, cheating was alive and well again in the form of match fixing, but this one succeeded. In an 1898 match between Stoke and Burnley, which ended in a draw, the fix was so obvious as players shot towards the corners and were derided by the fans. Most of the fixing has been attributed to Burnley keeper John Hillman, who bribed other players to throw the match. However, when his squad faced relegation, he tried to bribe Nottingham. They rejected him, beat his squad 4-0, then snitched on him. He tried to deny it by saying he was only joking and then was banned for a season. Number 10, everyone was kung fu fighting. It's 1994 and Man U forward Eric Cantona is playing in a match versus Crystal Palace. Suddenly, after a foul, he is given the red card. 
and instead of just walking off the pitch, Eric had other ideas. Yes, that's him unleashing a kung fu style kick on a fan, Matthew Simmons, who had rushed down to heckle Cantona. It's alleged Simmons said something derogatory towards Cantona being French and that provoked the attack. Eric said famously afterwards in his press conference, when the seagulls follow this trailer, it's because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. He received an eight month ban, beat the criminal charges, then threatened to never play in England again, but returned for the next season where he played alongside Nicky Butt. Number nine, only a yellow? Challenges towards the ball are common. Elbows to the face should not be. Man City forward Ben Thatcher received an eight game ban for his disgusting elbow to Portsmouth's Pedro Mendez. One that was so devastating, the true damage of it was not immediately realized. Mendez was rendered unconscious and needed an overnight hospital stay. Amazingly, Thatcher only received a yellow card, but was subsequently banned for eight matches then a further 15 were tacked on because someone just watched the tape again. Number eight, good men are hard to find. Most people know this man for being the tough guy in Guy Ritchie films. But Vinnie Jones also had a flair for the limelight when he was a ball grabbing player in the EPL. In 1992, he was on a video called Soccer's Hard Men, which celebrated dirty plays and slide tackles, many of which were his own. The former Chelsea and Wimbledon striker was given a six month ban, suspended, and fined 20K for painting the EPL in a bad light. He began his acting career six years later. For those wondering, Johnny Sins does not appear in the Hard Men video. Number seven, speaking of a-holes, have you ever heard of Joey Barton? Well, he's a guy that actually went to jail for his erratic actions, like in 2008 when he served 74 days of a six month sentence for assault in Liverpool city center. He was playing for Newcastle at the time. He also attacked a former teammate, Usman Dabu. He punched Morton Gams Pedersen in the gut and attacked three players on the last day of the season in 2012. He's done so many bad things, there is a three minute video on YouTube about just that. Like the time he threw a lit cigarette at a teammate. On top of his reckless and harmful behavior, he also got in trouble for gambling on Scottish football games in 2016 when he was managing a team in the league. He eventually admitted to betting over 1200 times, which got him an 18 month ban. And damn if Pete Rose is like WTF. Number six, indentured servants. Carlos Tevez and Javier Mascherano were brought in by West Ham in 2006 at the end of the transfer window in a move that bolstered the squad and gave them two talented players. Unfortunately, their rights were actually owned by Iranian businessman Kia Jarubkin, who signed them when they were young. So the transfer was illegal, but West Ham knew this and kept them both, with Tevez scoring huge goals and they had a successful season. Unfortunately for the squad, an investigation found that the transfer was indeed in violation and they were fined a record 5.5 million pounds, but were not banned from the Premier League. Sometimes the ends justify the means. Number five, at least try to sell it. 2009, while in the attack area, Norwegian Morten Pedersen has the ball for Blackburn. This is the saddest attempt at trying to draw a foul I have ever seen. It's worse than James Harden's traveling. Number four, another one blanks the dust. Luis Suarez has some big teeth and he's a flipping weirdo. Here he is in 2013 while a member of Liverpool biting Ivanovic of Chelsea. Do they not feed this dude enough Chivito in Uruguay? This is one of three mandibular incidents involving Suarez who was given a 10 game ban, which obviously didn't have enough bite to keep him from doing it again. Number three, do as I say. Oh, this one is recent as during the lockdown of 2020, Kyle Walker took to the airwaves and social media to tell people to remain indoors and stay safe. Too bad only days before, Kyle had thrown a sex party with escorts and a buddy. Even though he tried to tell the girls his name was Kai, that was about as effective as using the alias Ron Mexico and obviously one of the girls recognized him. Kai only received public backlash and probably chlamydia. Number two. WikiLeaks. 
Bruce Grabilar was a flashy goaltender for Liverpool in their glory years, but in his last year with them, things went cheatingly sour. After losing 50k in a failed investment, Bruce allegedly decided a quick way to make the money back was to fix a match against Newcastle. His business partner, Chris Vinson, leaked a seeming admission of this bribe, which prompted an immediate arrest of Grabilar and charges, which he ultimately beat in 1997. He would sue the Sun newspaper for libel, winning a single pound, but being forced to pay their legal fees of 500k quid, bankrupting him. Losing by winning. What a concept. And now for our number one most cheatingest EPL moment. Power and influence. What happens when you commit a wrong and get caught? Nothing if you have enough clout. From 2012 to 2016, Man City was caught essentially cooking their books and misrepresenting the amount of financial losses they were taking, constituting a serious breach of FFP regulations. They were also quite uncooperative during the investigation as they were covering their tracks by overstating sponsorship revenue. All that is boring nerd stuff, but what is interesting is that they were originally given a two-year Champions League ban, but recently won their appeal and will not miss any UCL games, prompting other squads to be quite upset with their reinstatement. Though, it's not like anyone would notice if they're there or not. Heyo! Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to check out the sponsor from the link below. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to my next video.